With me now is Marcos Papadatos. And sometimes on my celebrity interviews, I actually give Marcos a shout out. So Marcos, uh, tell us about you. Tell us, you are, how many interviews have you done so far? 19,056. 19, 19,056. You are known as the power journalist. Thank you. Okay. And it's been fun to work with you. It's like trading baseball cards. I'd be like, oh, I interviewed this person. You're like, oh, I haven't done that one. It's rare <laughs> that you haven't done someone that I've interviewed, but sometimes you've interviewed people that I haven't. And with us now is someone that you also introduced me to. So who did you bring with us today that we're going to be talking to once again? Emmy winner, Mike Manning. Yay. Hello, Mike Manning. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. So you got I'm good. Emmy. I'm good. So tell us about that. Uh, yeah, about yeah. Um, so I won an Emmy in 2019, uh, no, 2020 for producing the Bay and then 2021 for, uh, best supporting actor for my character in the Bay. Now the Bay is funny because Gregory Martin has been on the show. Marcos loves the Bay. Marcos is passionate about certain things in life. And I know that he's passionate about your career. So tell us Marcos, why you wanted to, I uh, have Mike on as a guest from your op opinion today. He's so versatile and I love his new movie, The Way Out that he has where he plays a fighter and it deals with like child uh, emotional abuse and child abuse. So tell us about that project, Mike. Um, well, sort of like your last guest, Donna, uh, I love to be a part of projects as a producer and as an actor that uh, center around certain social issues because I feel like film and television has such a capacity to educate and enlighten and, you know, open people's hearts and minds to different ideas. And this film is no different. It's called The Way Out. Uh, it's a thriller that releases on Feb February, this week, February 10th, uh, everywhere on digital. And it centers around two characters, Alex and Shane, both young men that had been abused when they were younger. And they handle it, they end up becoming roommates. And then they, they handle that abuse in very different ways. Uh, Alex turns to abuse, uh, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and he hurts himself. Whereas my character, Shane, turns to violence and revenge, and he uh, sort of copes with that abuse by hurting everybody else. So, Marcos, I know one of the things we talked about is that I was bullied when I was young. How about yourself? Did you... No, never, you've never I been. Can't say that I was. Which is amazing. And Mike, how about you? Did you have a journey where somebody bullied you, or you know, caused you to kind yeah, of not feel so good I've, about life? Absolutely. Yeah, I was. Um, I was the smallest of my friends in middle school, basically elementary school and middle school. I was bullied a lot. I was shorter than all my friends, and then in high school is where I came into myself and. Uh, developed confidence. I, you know, I gained a bunch of weight because I uh, finally had a growth spurt. I was a varsity wrestler. I joined student government. I was, you know, everything at that point sort of fell into place for me. But before that, I was definitely uh, bullied. I think projects now are giving people a voice. They're, be they're able to uh, shed a light on different topics and different things. You know, sometimes you're in the mood for a comedy, but sometimes you really are into something that makes you think, right? Absolutely. Thinking movies. Mm -hmm. Have you also noticed that, Marcos, that more projects, especially um, post-COVID, are a little deeper, have a little more Absolutely. substance Absolutely. And now to with them? the digital age, so many more projects that would have never seen the light of day are being told. Because they have access to the airwaves. Absolutely. All these platforms. So, Mike, well, what are some of the things? Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say also, I think that um, the horror thriller genre, especially like this movie, I think allows audiences to explore dark themes in a way that feels safe to them. Because, you know, the, the film, the genre itself provides escapism and, and sometimes things are just so far fetched. Science fiction does this as well. Um, but it's not as close as close to home as, as say a drama or something else. And so I think the horror thriller genre really allows filmmakers to explore dark sides of humanity and dark themes and things that might otherwise be uncomfortable uh, because there is that escapism and the audience feels like they're at an arm, they, you know, they're sort of at an arm's length from some of those themes. And this film too, also, I just want to note, it's special because um, it's based on the writer director, some of his real experiences as a child uh, and he, our writer director, his name is Barry J. He created Barry's boot camp. 
So he is somebody, his own life story is fascinating. He's somebody that was abused as a child. Uh, and then he used fitness and physica- you know, helping himself physically to uh, get over his addiction to alcohol. He is sober now. And then he went on to create Barry's Boot Camp, which is one of the uh, most popular you know, gym franchises in the world. So, uh, so he, in and of himself, he's an ex- a success story. Yes, and a motivational speaker. He's done so many different things with, you know, just his voice and his platform to make a difference. I know that this film is definitely going to make a difference. Marcos, did you want to also ask Mike a question too? Yeah. Okay, ahead. Can you tell us more about Buddha bullying? I know it's uh, you're an ambassador, and why is it so important to you, especially in this day and age? So Buddha bullying is celebrating uh, 10 years of being around, and what we do is we create content that is positive that we release online. We have a, a variety of ambassadors that are athletes and singers and actors and musicians. And um, and we go to schools and we talk to kids about bullying and how to eradicate bullying. And then we also create content together like PSAs and uh, positive quotes and everything else. And then we release that online to um, just put some goodness into the world and to combat cyberbullying, which is something that a lot of young people face today. They certainly do. Um, And kindness matters. So I think that, uh, you know, there needs to be like almost like a lesson plan where we can teach kindness because not everybody comes from a kind home. Right. So if that could be part of uh, an ongoing learning, just like you learn the alphabet, you know, you learn your your numbers, you could learn some things about kindness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we do. We actually work with teachers and parents, if parents uh, are noticing bullying happening or if teachers need resources, we have supplements that they can add to their sub- syllabus to do that exact thing. Well, Mike, thank you uh, once again for joining us. And it's been nice like, you know, to share, to share this moment with Marcos too. Thank so you. Marcos, thank you. Marcos, the last time you came on my show, you were reading a poem that you wrote about your mom, which was amazing. Thank so you. I know you like to more be behind the scenes, but thank you for being brave and Thank you for having me. Being here with me. Mike, happy journeys yeah, to you. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll thank you. you. And I will soon. say also, I will say, Marcos, thank you for setting this up. Marcos is always a proponent of people that he cares about in terms of helping them put their messages out into the world, messages that sometimes mainstream media ignores. So thank you again, Marcos and, and Donna for giving me uh, your time today. Oh my gosh, you're so welcome. And yes, Marcos is great. I just like every, we check in with each other at least once a week. So thanks so much, Mike. Thank Happy you, journey. Mike Manning. That's right. Emmy winner, Mike Thank Manning. You. Yay. Bye, Mike.